Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to take our platformer. We're going to make our player scene that's going to contain Marlowe and his animations and get him set up so that he works in game. We'll even attach a basic camera so that you can kind of add him to your level and have the camera focus on him just like this. Hey, Michael here. Throw on your favorite game dev tunes and join me as we build a 2D platformer in Godot 4 using GD Script. Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to set up our basic player scene with all the guts and the things that he needs to work, including some animations. So plug in some headphones, get some good music going, and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is create a new scene for our player. Much like we've got a scene for our level here that contains the, you know, the, the tile maps and everything like that, we're going to have a scene for our player that contains everything that he needs to work. That way we can have him dropped into any level and it'll just work as we've designed it, okay? So within this player folder in the project, I'm just going to right click and say create new scene and we'll call it player. And you'll wanna make sure that you have this 2D scene option selected here. And once you say okay and create that, it's gonna create the new scene, open it up. You'll see that our node 2D has been given the name of player. And of course the file is saved here in the player folder, okay? So what do we need for our player? The player is actually not going to be a regular node 2D. He's going to be a character body 2D, which is a special 2D node in Godot that's used for characters and character controllers. It's got a lot of things built in that we need to. And then he's going to need a sprite that displays, you know, the sprite sheet for the player, a little Marlowe there, as well as a few things like collision shapes, animation player, and something to play audio. Okay, so we're gonna get that set up. So let's start by right-clicking on our player node and let's select change type and i'm going to type in my search character body 2d or just kara so you'll see this here i'm going to go ahead and say change and you'll notice that the icon on this changed and we've got different options now in the inspector because character body 2d has different options than a node 2d in addition you'll notice we got this little warning because it uh, it says that the node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. If you remember in the previous video, we set up physics layers on our tile sheet. And so this shape that it's referring to here is the shape that it will use to make those collisions happen. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm just going to do control A and type collision. We want this collision shape 2D. Okay, we'll create that. And of course, this has a warning because this needs a shape provided if you have it selected, you'll see in the inspector, there's a shape option here. And I'm just gonna say new shape. You could do a capsule shape or a rectangle shape. And I'm gonna start with a rectangle and you can choose whichever one fits your project better. But um, that's essentially the physics shape for our player. And before we get too far into doing anything else, I'm gonna go back to my rigid body and there are gonna be collision options here. And it's fine to leave this on layer one. If you recall, we set up our terrain so that it was on collision layer five. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm also going to turn on six because eventually we're going to create, if you remember, I mentioned we're going to create a jump through type of terrain and we're going to put that on layer six. And we're going to put that on a separate layer so it's easy to distinguish them in code. But there we go. So now the collision is set up how I want for my player. So he's on layer one and he will collide with layers one, five, and six. Let's go ahead and add the other nodes that we're going to need here. So I mentioned them for the most part, but we need a sprite 2D node. Okay. And in fact, let me go back to the ad for that. There's this animated sprite. A lot of people will use this in Godot and um, it's fine. The disadvantage to an animated sprite is that you're going to use this for very fixed types of animations. For, for really basic games, this is probably sufficient for a lot of things that you're going to do. I always prefer to use Sprite 2D with a separate animation player because it gives us more control. And so that's the general reasoning behind that. Okay, so if you added an animated Sprite 2D, that, that may work for you. Some things will be different, but... Uh, there's that. Okay, so we've got our sprite. I also mentioned what we need an animation player. I just talked about that. So let's look for an animation player. And if I spell it, oh my gosh, if I spell it correctly, animation player. There's also an animation tree which controls the animations within an animation player. We just want the player. And I'm going to add an audio stream player 2D right here. So this will play sounds within the 2D space of our screen. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And, you know, just for fun, I'm going to add one more thing right now, and that's a camera. There we go. So we're going to have a camera attached to our player. And you can see this purple 
pinkish box. That's the camera bounds, okay? So once we've got those added, I wanna go ahead and start configuring our sprite. So I'm gonna select the Sprite 2D and you'll notice it has a texture option. We could go into our player sprites and drag and drop that on there. Another option with these is you can come down here and create a new one or you could do quick load and it's gonna show you kind of all the sprites in your project folders for your file system. So you could search for it. Um, you know, it's Marlowe is what it's called and I hovered over it, but there we go, there's Marlowe. Okay, so now we've got this little sprite sheet and before we get going with that, I just wanna drop this into our level and show you kind of how that's gonna work and then we'll continue working on our player. So within this level scene, if I take level, not level, if I take player and I drop it in here somewhere, let's just pick a spot maybe up here. Um, we should be able to see this in the game. And because we've attached a camera to our player and it's the only camera in our project, if I run this scene, then it should center on our player. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you've made it that far, then everything is set up according to the sim configuration I have, I think. And then we're ready for the next steps. Okay, so many of you are wondering, like, what's wrong with the sprite? How is this going to work? And the way that we work with sprites and Sprite 2D in Godot is that we attach a texture like we've already done, but then we need to configure it because Godot doesn't know by default how many frames there are in our animated sprite. This particular sprite and texture is very simple because we have one row of frames, okay? You could have multiple, you know, two or three rows, but then we have, you know, a number of frames or columns as well, okay? And you can see, what do we got? One, it's eight, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we go down to our animation section of the Sprite 2D, we can set the hor horizontal frames to eight. And now it's sized more appropriately. And if you had vertical frames, let's say you had two, then, you know, obviously it would do the same, but <laughs> we don't want to cut Marlowe's head off there. So I'm going to set that back to one. And I'm just going to drag this. I want his feet and everything to be just at the origin of this. So you see that little dot down there. That's the zero, zero. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my collision shape as well so that it kind of lines up with that and maybe just drag this edge up to about the eyeballs or the head right about there i don't know somewhere in his hat maybe and resize it this way if you look at the collision shape i've adjusted the size of that rectangle right in there just by dragging those little um, handles one last thing i like to do with this collision shape is you can stick it in front so that you can see it but then i i like to select the color and drag this alpha all the way down because then it's a little bit less obtrusive and we only see the outline but that way it's easy to see the outline that's just a preference thing you don't need to do that but now our sprite is set up so that we can animate it right because it's it's configured so that we only see one at a time now this is something that if you're new to godot we haven't done yet if i hit f5 it's going to try and run the level scene because i've set that as my startup scene so here we go it's showing the level there's my little marlo hovering above the grass and uh, everything's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and add animations for our sprite. So I'm going to select the animation player and let's go ahead and just say new animation. And the first animation we'll call idle. This is going to be the animation we play when the player is not pressing any input into the game. OK, and all we really want to do with this, we can add a track. Um, we could add a track, which is like a property where's property track oh it's the first one uh, there's a couple other ways to add tracks though that might be easier if you have your animation player selected and you select an animation you can then go pick any node in the scene tree and like right here we're on frame zero i'm going to hit this little key icon next to it you notice that key icon will only appear when we have the animation selected and then it's going to ask us if we want to create a reset frame on a reset track um and i'm going to do that so i'm going to say create and there we go. We've got our simple idle. The idle is just that one frame. Okay. And what's really cool, right? If we had an animated sprite, we could set up animations. But this one of the great features this animation player gives is the ability for us to add keyframes for other things. Like we could change the position of the camera. We could play an audio file. We could change the scale of the sprite. Or we could change the color of the sprite. And all these things are things that we can add as keyframes to this animation that you can't do with an animated sprite. Okay, we're not going to be doing that right now in this early in this series because it's not needed for the basic functionality, but that is where a lot of the power and flexibility of this animation player comes from in Godot. Okay, so we've got our idle animation. 
let's go ahead and look. It created this reset animation right here, which is just going to be kind of like the default frame of all of the things that you've set up. And so it's nice to have that, especially if you're working and things get kind of wonky because you're on an animation that maybe fades out the player and is invisible. You could just click reset. He'll look normal. I'm going to go to idle and set this as the autoplay on load which it should by default but and obviously it's not doing anything if we run the game it doesn't look any different than before because it's just that one frame but let's go ahead in our animation and let's let's um copy or duplicate the idle animation and we'll make an animation for run and what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the duration of this animation to 0 0.4 seconds and i'm going to set my clipping on this to 0.1 seconds because it's a four frame animation so we only need those four you know 0.4 seconds i want to play a new frame every 0.1 seconds you could keep that on the 0 0.03 through 3 or whatever and do it based on frame rate if you want to uh, i just don't like doing it that way and then i'm also going to turn on this snapping of the timeline cursor if i have it off then this is really smooth and it can go to like these small increments but if i turn on the snapping then it's going to snap it to whatever my setting is here Okay, so on this first frame, we actually need to change the value. When we select that keyframe, you can see there's a frame value here. And if I increase that, you can see in the animation player, it's updating it. And if I drag the playhead, you'll see that it is actually setting that animation frame to a different frame. The run animation um, happens on frames one and zero and two, I guess, zero, one and two. I'm not sure. Let me think. Yeah. And it's built in kind of a funny way. So let's start on frame one here. So I'm going to just set this to one. And then we'll go to 0 0.1 here and let's create a new key by right clicking and saying insert key. And then we're going to set this value to two. So you can see now his legs will get farther apart. Then we're going to go ahead and insert one more key. I wonder if you can hear my kids yelling and playing up there. <laughs> I'm going to set this back to one and then we'll go to 0 0.3, insert another keyframe and set it to zero. Okay, so we've got a little animation like this. Now, if we hit play, you can see it plays once. We want this animation to be able to play on loop repeatedly. And there's an option for that right here. It's animation looping. We can just turn that on. And now it'll just seamlessly loop just like that. Okay. So we've got a run animation set up. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we have a few other animations that we want to create. And these are all very simple. They're mostly single frame. So there's really not much to them. So I'm going to go back to my idle. And I'm just going to go to animation and say duplicate. We want one for jump. And the jump frame is going to be frame four. So we'll just go up to four like so. OK, so now you can see there's his jump. I'm going to duplicate this jump animation and we'll call this one fall. I think Marlowe's contemporaries only have a jump animation, don't have a fall animation, but I think it's frame five. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. OK, so it looks like he's going wee and falling. <laughs> And then let's go ahead and duplicate one more time. I'm going to call this animation crouch. Crouch is on frame six. OK, so there's Marlo crouching down. We'll duplicate this animation. And I'm going to call this one skid. And this animation is like when you're changing directions and he's going to be like turning, right? Um, skid is actually frame three. So I'm just going to type that in there. There we go. Okay, so we've got these animations set up. We're going to use those as we as we begin adding movement and things to our character. Okay, they're very simple, but just as a demonstration, let's go ahead and select our run animation, and we can click this autoplay on load on the run, and then when we run our project, Marlo should be running in the air. And there we go. So we've managed to set up all that we need for our Marlo player character. He's got his animations. He's got nodes that we haven't done much with yet, like the audio player, but we're going to be able to use those nodes in future tutorials to add functionality and features to our player. So thank you for following along. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and if you're learning. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you next time.